Hello. All right. Recordings in progress. We're on the air. Welcome. Hello. And this is Larry Wells. I'm trying to get over here so I can see and clear my screen. Uh, founder of Future Life Now way back in uh, 1994. I've uh, done a lot of things in addition to that since then. And I have invited you, or we have invited you, because we're interested in, in presenting to you some uh, people who have taken uh, NLP success in the past, and these are these are not necessarily handpicked. They are people from the most recent group, however, and uh, I just want to have a conversation with them. And when I finish with these uh, people with their individual conversations, we'll open it up to questions that you might have for the participants. And I want to start with Tony. And there she is, Tony Norse. Uh, let me get there. I want to. I always forget her last name, Barnard. So, hi, Tony. Good morning. Uh, it's good to see you. Where are you? Where are you, Tony? I live in Rio Rico, Arizona, which is a little town um, on the border of Mexico and Arizona. All right. Okay. So pretty south. It's kind of like warm where you are, maybe. Well, it'll be nice in the day. We start off at about this morning. It was 30 degrees, but by oh, noon, really? Yeah, but by noon it's usually around 70. So okay, great. So I'm in uh, Cincinnati this morning, and if we're lucky, it will get to 30 degrees sometime. <laughs> but it was like nine o'clock, nine degrees Fahrenheit when I when I got up this morning. So tell me, tell me a little bit about your experience with uh, future life now success. Um, well, it was pretty profound for me. I really enjoyed NLP. It's um, to just jump right into what was worked best for me was learning about timelines okay. and um, perceptual um, positions of time. And when we got into that, that's when the that was the meat of the program for me. And it made the rest, all the other immersions, one, two, and three, all linked together. So um, because it, it allowed me to go to really put into perspective of a sleep disorder that I've suffered from since childhood. Mm. And, um, and that's what timelines does when we, when we, when we learn to look at things from a different place, right. And ask ourselves, um, would we respond the same way today to things that happened to us a long time ago? And that was very therapeutic for me. And I'm still working at it. I, I it, This is ongoing work. But um, to explain what happened is from childhood, I developed, and not just me, I'm one of eight children. And I, I, I feel pretty confident in saying that we all suffer from a sleep disorder. And it has to do with a lot of chaos, growing up in a home of chaos. And, um, and so I learned early on um, how to not sleep as a form, I believe, of protecting myself. It was a, yeah. a coping skill. And, it, you know, and I took it, you know, I'm 59 and it took me 59 years um, to learn how to, to finally have to sleep six hours a night. And I am so grateful to you. Um, uh -huh. I, you'll never know how much that means to me. So, uh, first of all, let me ask you a question about um, how it is that you got interested or you heard about NLP, why you might have signed up to begin with? Um, well, I, I'm a, I've, I've taught jazzercise for 38 years. Uh, I'm yoga certified for 10 years and gyrotonic for five years. And so I, I'm always on the search for new information of trying to understand not only myself, but the people that I offer services to. And this just spoke to me. Um, and also, you know, when you're trying to heal yourself, um, it's, it, it's everything about it um, just says, oh, an opportunity not only to help myself, but others. Okay. And I think that's important about, has this uh, training impacted your uh, professional life? Um, I anticipate it will with COVID. I have not <laughs> had the the luxury of really um, practicing my skills. However, 
um, COVID has offered me the um, opportunity to study it, though, because I have not since we ended our our sessions. I I just delved deeper and deeper into the pro to what I can learn about mm -hmm. myself and and the program. Yeah. What do you say about the? Uh, you have anything to say or to explain to people about the process? What a typical NLP success class looks like. Um, well, it was great fun. Um, you make it very <laughs> well. You make it really fun, and I had and I remembered being scared of it. I remembered being frightened because to to dive into pools that you don't wish to open and to o doors that you don't wish to open it can be frightening, and to be in the in a group of people who who seem to be like minded, you know, and I um, made it feel safe. You made it fun. The people I was in the training with made it feel safe. And I liked, um, I was in a group of people that were pretty educated and um, I liked how they challenged you. <laughs> right. Well, that's, that's great. So. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and of course, you know, uh, if people have looked at our website, uh, having a degrees, advanced degrees is certainly no requirement for this because it is, yeah, I mean, you're exactly right. I'm, you know, if, if I can't have fun doing this, I ain't doing it. <laughs> and if I can't have people have, but it is fun that, well, I can just tell you about my experience in that sense of profound changes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so, so Tony, you've had this experience of, of, uh, having this this impact your life in terms of this lifelong really lifelong issue of of, of being sleep deprived mm -hmm. and that has changed and i'm suspecting that that might have had some kind of uh, impact upon your personal life with family and so forth yeah i'd say that i, I don't want to put words in your mouth don't say <laughs> what's what's not there um, I no, I, 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 the way I see here and sense um, everyone around me now is different. Um, uh -huh. I think and function from a whole different place in my mind and my heart now. Ah, great. Well, I can just want to say to the, the people, my in, interactions with, with Tony, I know how much she cares about the people that she has treated and she's pretty upset about COVID and not being able to be with them. But, but her whole intention of life is, is about making life better for other people. And uh, in, in this process, as she has said, uh, it has helped also to improve her life. So, yeah, so. thank you, Tony. We're going to take a break. We're going to see uh, our, our next guest, and I want to invite Stefan. Hi, Stefan. Hey, Larry. How are things today? I'm doing all right. Hey, would you like to, would you mind telling people a little bit about your background, what you do, and, and that sort of thing first? Sure. I'm a stretching therapist. I've been a stretching therapist for 20 years. And, you know, helping people, you know, pre and post rehab and surgery, uh, try to help people who are looking for answers that they couldn't find elsewhere in traditional therapies. Okay, great. So tell me about your experience with NLP success, what you would like people to know. <clears throat> you know, I came into NLP with, 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 you know, just a real big curiosity. I've, I've heard about it before, but I, the, the content when I found it never just seemed clear to me, and I wanted more clarity. And I thought, well, I keep getting these emails. I might as well look into this course. So <laughs> <laughs> it's just kind of one of things, it's just kind of pecking away at me. And I'm like, you know what? <laughs> All right, it's talking to me. Let, let me reach out to him, and it's been great because it answered questions I had for a long time. Other systems I've learned of, of therapy or um, interactions, you know, they, there were things I always questioned, but I felt like the person I was, didn't have the answer I was looking for. And a lot of the content, a lot of the answers I was looking for were in NLP. If it was a technique, if it was, you know, uh, oftentimes it was the technique, something I, I learned, earlier on, but didn't have enough substance or background in it, 
But NLP, the course here, really fulfilled all those questions I had for me. And it really connected a lot of dots for me. Ah, great. Well, I, I appreciate that. And, and um, yeah, no, for the, for the folks that are watching, I, I just want to say that uh, Stefan and I and these other people that we're going to talk to today have not rehearsed this. This is not a scripted, <laughs> scripted thing. And uh, so uh, how has it impacted, first of all, your professional life? Well, professionally, I can't say it's too different in I, overall, but what is different are there are times where I kind of think about reaching into that tool bag from an LP. Because <laughs> if, <clears throat> when a client comes in, you know, we just have an opening conversation and just kind of check in with them. And there's times where it's, I've, I've had to pull things out just because they were open to it. And there was something that was, a new, a new opening in their body emerged, a thought they had that came out, they realized was holding them back. And we've had conversations, which is what NLP oftentimes is, is a conversation, it seems to me. And it was just kind of a natural flow. They were, they were open to the idea. We had a, a few minutes before a session to do a little NLP work and they felt lighter and often they would joke like, I don't think I even need to do any kind of body work right now. I'm done. <laughs> so, so and, and, and to me, that was some of the, the, the coolest part was like, it's so powerful when the person's present and isn't, they just make that change pretty quickly. Oftentimes. Yeah. yeah. They feel lighter. Yeah. So okay. pers personally, has it had an impact in your personal life as well? Or relationships or, I mean, I'm, I don't want to put words in your mouth. That's very unsanitary. So, <laughs> Especially with COVID. <laughs> so, so I'm just really interested in, and, uh, and, you know, I know that this has had the, I, I'm, and this is just blows me away that you could say, it sounded like a conversation if anybody had stepped in and observed it, it would have been a conversation. And yet in that conversation, life changed. Yeah. Yeah. And, so, and, yeah. and, and what about in, 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 uh, your, your personal life? Yeah. You know, my personal life, uh, during the course, um, I got married and which, which <laughs> well, was great, <okay. laughs> but I wouldn't say it was a big, I didn't get married because of NLP. But <laughs> no, no, no. I... <laughs> <laughs> but what it, what it did for me is it's, it was like one of those because I did so much work in the course of myself. Yeah. And it let me let go of things, shine light on things that I wasn't aware of that were kind of internal uh, triggers or internal friction that I had in myself in, um, in my history that, uh, that, had me almost a sense of reticence to do certain things in life. And there were just moments where I was like, just absolutely lift and change my body. But that translated over into my relationship with my wife, how I, how I, I listened differently. You know, I, I which is, that was very, that was probably one of the biggest things I took away was what I'm paying attention to when someone's speaking. I'm not just hearing their words. I'm not just present for them, but it's almost there's a, an interpretation of the words. There's things that I highlight, like depending on what words they're saying, like, oh, that's important. And maybe I use that word back to them because that's going to make a better connection for us right now. So um, so that really helped, I think, to enrich my relationship with my wife. Yeah, great. Yeah, and uh, I know you have a child or some kids, right? Yeah, we have we have a uh, seventeen year old boy. Yeah, he just yeah. got a license. He's driving now, and um, oh my goodness, how <laughs> that's a transition in and of itself, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, 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 it's it's been a nice transition. It's it's great to see him to grow and just kind of blossom, kind of become his own. And you know, and it's it was tough on the kids with COVID. So just really being able to listen to him and be there when he needs him, needs us. Uh, well, thanks, Stefan. I I mean. And you, like the other people that, that, that have agreed to come and some people that would have liked to have come, but this time just schedule just didn't work out. I, I know you, you, you all had such an impact on each other's lives and, and you've learned for yourself so much about uh, just, just being in the world and, 
And you know, my, my teacher says uh, we're about creating a world to which people want to belong. And I saw that happening in all these people. That was the most exciting part for me. It wasn't just that I could, I could give some people some tools. They actually went out into their families and their communities and made a difference in the world. And, and Stefan, I just really appreciate you and, and the other people that were in that group. That was just an incredible group. Thank you for, uh, for sharing with us. I, you'll be back in a few minutes to answer questions from anybody uh, who's listening or watching that wants to make some questions. And we're going to go now to Wally. Hi, Wally. I, I need you to unmute yourself, please. There you are. Okay, good. So how are you today? I'm very well, thank you. And Miami, where are you? Miami, Florida, and it's about 68 degrees. And it's <laughs> you poor thing. <laughs> I know. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I flew into uh, Daytona one time for a, for a week-long conference. And uh, if it was like in January, I left from St. Louis. I flew into to uh, Daytona. And in St. Louis, it was this wonderful 31 degrees and drizzling. <laughs> flew, in, flew into Daytona and it was like, you know, 60 some degrees. And we had this guy in the group that came up from Miami who was complaining because it was so cold. <laughs> no, whoa, how can that be? So, so I, I appreciate the fact that, that you're going to spend some time with us on this, on this day, this morning, and uh, about the NLP. So, so Tony, I mean, Tony, I'm sorry, Wally, I'm back on my first spot. Wally, what would you like to say about your time with us, with Future Life Now success? It was enjoyable, and it was uh, a new learning experience for me. Um, to be in small groups and really play with each other. It seemed like we were kind of like at a, a slumber party and we were playing games, but they were <laughs> fun and interesting games. And so, was, go ahead. And so I took away a few things, but I didn't take away enough. So I'm really encouraged to continue learning it. Um, and I'm reading Frogs to Prince into princes. Oh yes, okay. And um, so I, I also really appreciate the idea that I can return to your course and get it again. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now I want to I want to uh, clarify a little bit about this playing games and having a slumber party. <laughs> Nobody was in their pajamas. <laughs> well, it's on Zoom. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it was sort of. And also, I, I'm interrupting you, but I didn't understand you at first. I thought, when are we going to get to start this? And then it dawned on me, you were telling stories. And it was the stories that were important and not only your play, playing around. Yeah. Yeah, playing around means that we enjoyed our time together and we, and we had some fun, but we also did some things that were pretty important that made differences in people's lives. And, and Wally participated in those small groups and she led someone through a process that made a change for them. And she may have been having fun, they were having, but, but life actually changed. And, uh, and that happened, that was our general presentation was I would come on, I would, I would tell a story, I would talk about a particular process for a certain sort of situation. I would sometimes demonstrate it with one of the participants and everybody saw what I was doing and heard the words. And then we broke up into small groups and everybody practiced on each other. So one of the things that happens in this process, and, 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 and Wally called it as playing with one another. And it was playing, it was fun, and it was enjoyable, but it was also transformational, right? Right, there was a time when I was in, led back to a 
an experience of my grandfather, who I didn't know very well, but I, I was also afraid of him. And he was a, an unusual man. And in this work that I did, I became, I understood him and it's, it's lasted, you know, until now. So I have a different relationship towards him. And another thing, the other day I was walking on a, a walk with my trekking poles mm -hmm. and I was wanting in my mind to lose weight. Now I've gained weight since the course. And I remembered something I had read about taking the three representational ways of relating through vision, auditory, and feeling. And I just said to myself, you will see yourself differently and feel differently in your clothes and, and hear other people, you know, respond. And it was those three items that it kind of like was a trigger for me to not eat so much and it's lasted so i i i thank you for that i thank you for all of the things that i learned but i have many more to learn well i appreciate that wally i thank i thank you for that and and uh, certainly uh, the story you just told was new to me I, but i'm grateful that it came out of your your time with us and uh I thank you for taking this time to to share with us and, and the idea that uh, it didn't sound like much learning going on at the beginning and then all of a sudden, ta-da! <laughs> because, because, you know, our life is a story and our story is our life. And if we can change the story, we change our lives this because of something it, it said something about you will learn how to communicate better was, and that's what I wanted to do was because I'm kind of quiet and so I look like I'm different because I'm quiet or shy or something like that mm -hmm. so I I want to be able to be more you know talkative but in for instance for the sake of a, an improved relationship or how to get information and how not to just get trivial thought, you know. So. Well, I want to tell you about a friend of mine. I was in a group with her, she, and, and this was some kind of study group, and the guy that was facilitating the, the, the everybody had been talking about everything, and finally he said to, to her, he said, Fran, uh, you haven't said anything tonight, and she said, quiet people aren't the only ones that don't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> so that that was a great learning for me from from her and in my own defense i wasn't facilitating that group so <laughs> so, uh, so wally thank you for being with us and hang on for a moment uh, there may be people who have some questions for you when we get finished with with our next person is susanna Hi, Susanna. Hello. Now, I know Susanna is in Mexico. Uh, she has yes. a coat on. It's cold there, uh, according to her standards. <laughs> so anyway, so Susanna, uh, it's so good to see you again. We haven't, we've had some brief conversations over the, over the past few months, but so what would you like to say about uh, the, your experience with NLP success? Well, it's, it was um, the beginning of healing, I could say. You know, um, uh, when we review about the trauma and these exercises, it came to me that uh, that I was a traumatized person. So I started to work with my psychotherapist about that. And um, actually I, I'm still working on it, but it, it has, NLP has opened like a new world, like a new perspective of the world. Um, it has changed my wave of 
uh, relate to others in my personal life and in my business also. Yeah. So, so tell me, uh, uh, tell people about your business, what you uh, what you you do. Well, I am a, a neurokinetic therapy practitioner, and I also have a, 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 a Pilates studio. And well, I work with. Oh, we're missing some connection uh, here. To help them uh, in their so say that again we had a, a break yeah. in the communication so so you recently uh, were that i have no, go ahead you, please um that i am an, an nkt uh, neurogenetic therapy practitioner and i help people to to feel better in their own bodies healing mm -hmm. uh their injuries right and yeah. so let me ask you so has uh, how has has nlp impacted that yeah a lot and, and could yeah. you say a little bit how for example there are some instructions um where you uh guide the people to pressure to apply pressure for example push up push down and I realized that when I integrate the NLP, for example, the, the visual cues, the kinesthetic cues, and the auditory uh, cues, the, the, the test changed just because I gave the wrong instruction. For example, if the person was uh, were uh, visual, and I gave a kinesthetic instruction, the, the test changed completely. But uh, when I um, focus on, on the person and which kind of uh, uh, system her, her, like, yeah, using NLP has changed. And also, for example, in my Pilates classes, uh, uh, most of my clients are elderly. Okay. So, uh, uh, they, they, they see the world or the ma the map is not the territory. Uh, also, has helped me to to see uh, that there there are different views of the world. And they are right because it's the, the their way of seeing things. Yeah. So Great. it has helped me. Excellent. So to do just a little bit of, of, of uh, explanation, uh, what what Susanna is saying is that you know there are kinesthetic learners, there are visual learners, there are auditory learners, and 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 what she's saying is that when when she discovered that she could listen and observe and discover what their best uh, what they what they received best if they were she could actually discover that they were art visual so she would help paint a picture for them so they would know what to do or 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 to get across if they were kinesthetic she would talk to them about their feelings and what they should sense and uh, an auditory step-by-step -step kind of instructions kind of things is is important and it made a huge difference in the outcome with your clients is that right yeah Completely. Okay. 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 So I'm getting some uh, yeah. delayed <laughs> delayed reaction, not from from Susanna, but electronically. Uh, so, so, uh, uh, and I, you know, Susanna has has been kind enough to talk with us again about just in fact of how uh, the NLP and the whole concept of the map is not the territory, and not only changed your professional but your personal life. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. In my, for example, with my husband, he's uh, ten years older than me, 
And now I can see that when we are discussing about uh, things, uh, I can put my mind on his shoes, like, okay, you have a different point of view of this situation, but I, I am interested to know what your point is. So <laughs> it has changed my life. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that is great because the typical reaction is if somebody has a different model of the world, they're wrong. But when I understand yeah. they have a different map of the world, that means, okay, so they're behaving according to their map and I might be able to get along with them if I understand their map. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, that, that's, that's the great thing. And I'm, I'm grateful that you're continuing with, with uh, your own personal growth and, and so forth. So uh, right now I want to just thank you for, for being with us. And uh, uh, it, it's been great to see uh, this group of people together. I'm uh, going to I'll open it up to, to questions. And I have uh, off, see, off screen um, my director. Um, my business partner, uh, my wife. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to ask the first question if I can. Okay, go ahead. Here. I want to ask this the is... Darby and I want to ask the first question. There's Darby. Those of you who ask about Darby. <laughs> uh, uh, so I'd like to go back to Tony and Tony. Could you describe for if you are, are comfortable with it? Of course, describe for us just a little bit more um, what what was what was life like in terms of not getting enough sleep and how how that would happen for you every night and then how that changed and what you what you think maybe uh just a little more detail on what you think maybe led to that transformation I'm, I'm very curious sure um so my pattern was i would when i would lay down to go to sleep i could fall asleep but i couldn't stay asleep and i would wake up and it would there would be a vibration in my body, a constant vibration. And it felt like um, when somebody plays the drums and there's the cymbals and you take a brush and you tap the cymbals and it goes. Well, it had a sound and a feeling and um, and it just would not let me be. I, I couldn't shake it. I just could not shake um, the sound or the vibration. And so that's what would keep me from sleeping. And um, so through NLP, um, I was able to calm that down by uh, many of the processes, right? We do lots of processes on trying to, how we see the issues that we have in our life. And by going back and dealing with all these issues and creating a calmness in my mind, it calmed, I, and they, you know, and I remember in the beginning of the program, Larry would talk about um, plasticity of the brain, and and I and I was like, yeah, I need, I want some of that, you know. Um, but it was all an, you know, he, he there's all this information, but it's all an inside job, right? It's all an inside job, and so I learned by doing these exercises and these processes that I could change what what. I thought about things. And when I changed about how I thought about things, it changed about how I felt and how I felt in my own body. And it calmed my heart down. And when my heart calmed down, my body did. And mm -hmm. um, I... Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, thank you so much for sharing some of that with us. That's beautiful. I'm so glad for you. So glad for Me you. Too. <laughs> Yeah. It's, it's yeah. Our, yeah, and it led to greater happiness. I mean, I have, I was telling Larry, I have this wonderful life and a, a very peaceful life. I live in a beautiful home and a, I have a wonderful husband and, um, and I still couldn't get peace, even though I'm surrounded by it, because it was all in here. Thank you. And I Thank have you. Peace now. Thanks, yes, Tony. we feel it. We feel it, dear. That's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, I'd so like I, to say I'd like to say one thing too that that when people in the course were working with issues, some I mean I did some demonstrations, but 
you know, Tony herself will tell you that the first time she worked with another person on a problem that I didn't know anything about, she had success. And that when somebody worked with her as the, what we call the explorer, if you were a therapist, if she would be the, the client, uh, that person with a half an hour ex explanation and some processes had some impact. So it happens very, very quickly. And now, Tony went through a series of things to get her to this, this recognition. But I want you to understand the recognition and the problem solved came from within her by people helping her, guiding her to get to that place. And now Tony is clearly capable of guiding other people to find some kind of resolution and hope and, and change in their place. So yeah, thanks, Tony. Thank you. I'll just bring everybody back on. If you would like to ask any of these folks a question, just raise your virtual hand. You can find that below in the reactions area and you're welcome to ask them directly. And otherwise they'll just uh, hang out here for a couple of minutes, maybe chat with each other and wait to see if anybody has a question before Larry uh, signs us off. So I... There's nothing yet. Nothing yet. Just we'll just give it a minute. <laughs> so, did you have a good uh, small group experience? Any of you can talk about this. It was it's a, a pretty personalized training, isn't it? Yeah, I think that was one of the surprises initially for me. I wasn't sure how big the class would be, and then. When we got into it, I thought, wow, this is amazing because being the size that we had allowed us all to participate all to, at different times and, and be in different groups with each other. So I think the size of the class allowed us for us to be more open in some ways and, and, and get comfortable, I think, pretty quickly. At least it was, that's how I felt myself. And that just allowed uh, for those conversations to just be free and, and, and easy and, and supportive. And, and that was a really important piece because everybody had different backgrounds, but everybody was supportive of each other. Thanks, Stefan. So I got hands up on our, almost all our participants, so. Well, I wanted to say that I want to clear up the slumber party image because what I meant was that we had time to just be comfortable and, and hang out together and had a activity to do that was kind of um, interesting and fun and introspective. So it was a good combo. Yeah, I would say one thing about this, this particular group was getting them back together was not always easy. <laughs> <laughs> they loved hanging out with each other and working on issues and, and, and say, well, we only got through two of the three people we're supposed to. <laughs> Can we have some more time? And fortunately, we did have some more time, but uh, and we try to plan that. But uh, yeah, and people do get into some fairly deep and significant issues, even from the get go. So. But it was wonderful. That just good group, good good folks. So I I saw a hand in Stefan. I saw a hand in and Wally, and and now I see one in Tony. Uh, we I, have a question from uh, Helena, and I'm gonna. Oh, okay. I'm trying to figure out why I can't get her picture to show up. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanna, I'm, I'm gonna uh, let you disappear. I'm Go ahead. I'm driving, and I I don't want you to see me driving. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, so I'm so glad you're here, Cynthia. I have, I have an issue with completing, just as you told the story about your cousin. Um, my father said a long time ago, you'll never complete college, and therefore completed it early. But uh, since then, 
I got my master's degree, but it was such a, it was, um, it was a, it was painful. I, uh, it was just painful just to, to do the work. And here I am with everybody else in the certification who has completed certification of Bones for Life with Cynthia and Brian. And I just am stuck. And I just, I know that this would help. And I'm just embarrassed to tell the same where I am stuck and embarrassed. Okay, I'm going to see. If, okay, Helena, I'm going to see if I can uh, pull the. We had a little trouble with the sound, so let me see if I can pull the most of it out of that. So Helena has been in the Bones for Life program. She's had done a master's degree. She uh, knows she can be accomplished, but she's having trouble feeling stuck. Like she's a little bit distressed that other people are completing their certification requirements in Bones for Life, and she hasn't. Is that is that kind of it, Helena? 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 Absolutely, yes, yes. And so how, Larry, or any of you, actually, let's not just hear from Larry, any of you, how do you think that uh, this program could help her become unstuck or maybe a private session could help her become unstuck? Whoever wants to. Yeah, I, I think in the, the I, I had a stuck feeling myself. This is Stefan. And, you know, there was an issue I had, I didn't realize it was way back to kindergarten, honestly. And <laughs> once I made that connection and saw it from a different perspective, I thought, oh my God, it's so different. And just that different perspective enlightened me. It enlightened my body, enlightened my spirit. I just, I just felt lighter and I didn't feel, um, I didn't feel held back like that was that was that moment for me was was a moment that was always holding me back or it was playing in my background and, and it no longer does and it has a very different feeling when I, when I reflect upon it now so so and that was very quick actually um, and it was with one of my classmates in just our and one of our uh, breakout sessions and all of a sudden like you know they did the work they they led me down this path and actually I did the work by following them and but they did it. They helped me with what they were, what they just learned. So that it's, I say that because it happens fast. It can happen really quickly. So. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and the person you work with didn't have a PhD in the, in the psychology, right? <laughs> no, no, they didn't. Not that I, not, not that I know. <laughs> we all have different backgrounds, though. I do know that. <laughs> yeah, so it can happen quickly, and it happened with someone who was learning the process. Yeah, great. And Thank it, you. if that was the only thing she wanted to work on, she might just want to have a private session with one of these NLP practitioners on the screen. It wouldn't even have to be Larry. <laughs> yes, uh, I got to cut. No, 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 that's true. Uh, if you could contact one of these people, they could they could help you with that. And uh, that's, what, I'm sure that that's what I'm about. That's what I'm. It's not just that I I want to help people. I want to help people help people, and all of these people are helping people. All of them. We have a great question from Tracy. I just have to find it here. Sorry, something's disappeared for me. My chat. Um, having i think it's tracy yeah having participated so this is for the other for the participants not for larry having participated what if anything might you have changed in how the course was organized uh slash presented uh say again cynthia i'm not sure yeah. i understand for the participants so this is aimed at the others I understand that. What, yeah. having participated in the nlp success program what if anything would you change about how it was organized or presented uh, that's a good question that's a question i want mm -hmm. answered i i have a response um i enjoyed how it was taught i don't know that i would change anything um during the how it's presented I, having had some time away from it now, I feel the need to be back in it and to re, I would like to revisit the material because I, I now have 
um, questions and concerns about the things we learned that I didn't have before, but it, it took me time to figure out what my questions were to have. I needed a little experience with it before I could know what my questions were. I don't know how the other group, how everybody else feels, but that would be my response is, a, is needing to have a part two. Ah, okay. Yeah, I, I agree 100% with Tony. Um, stepping back for a little bit, getting a, a, a different view of the work and then re-immersing myself, seeing what really, what, what stuck to me, what do I really need? What was I gravitating toward? That was really an important piece to step away from it, but to go back to it. Um, so what would I change? Having a, having a next level, having something else to kind of look forward to, to get into. It's certain like six months or a year away for me, like because because it gave me time um, to 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 work with it in a way that was natural for me and see what it what what fell off to the side that I, and I revisited in, in different ways. So that's something that would occur to me. Susanna, um, I agree with Stefan and Tony, and for example. Uh, it's like get, we started with the light uh, things and through the process we get into the deeper and deeper things. And I, I think that if, for example, if you change the material and you go deeper at the beginning, uh, at least I couldn't handle it. So the way you, or the way you organize the, the topics what, what, where really, really well for me, at least, at, at least for me. Yeah. Thank you. Wally, you have something to say? I want to say something to Helena that I also get those feelings of feeling stuck. Even if I completed the program, I don't know how to, to actually put them into practice. And, um, you know, having a commitment to doing this or sharing it is a, is helpful, but figuring out a small steps to put it into practice, you know, like some of the easier early program, you know, things that we did like presuppositions, that's easy. And I've noticed that I put that into practice um, frequently and it helps. And so I would, I, I also respond to assignments. And so uh -huh. if, I, if I come back to your class, I could, you know, really benefit from that too. Okay, good. Great information for me. Thank you. Uh, Helen asks, I hope that was, I hope that was helpful, Tracy. Helen asks, was... could, you, could you please expand on territory versus maps? Uh, okay. Um... I, I could answer that, but in, in, would any of you like to answer that? <laughs> well, here's the deal. I live in Cincinnati. Uh, and uh, when I moved to Cincinnati from Missouri, I got this humongous map of Cincinnati. Because this was before I had GPS on my cell phone. Actually, it was before I had my cell phone, <laughs> so it's been a while. And I could look at that map to find any place uh, to get from where I was to any place I wanted to go. Before that, I had been working with, uh, with a youth group, and once a year, we took this youth group uh, to hike, and uh, this was in Missouri, and we took a youth group to hike in the Colorado Rockies. And I was the van driver, the primary van driver, and we drove from central Missouri through Lima, Colorado, up to uh, uh, Colorado Springs. And I had this map and it told me what to do, where to turn, which roads to take, etc. So we get there, we get all geared up, we get our backpacks on us, we're going to camp up on the mountains, we're going to hike for five days. And I get up on the mountain and I'm looking at my map. And I had no clue. My road map didn't 
tell me where I was on the mountain. If I was high enough, I could look over there and see a road and guess maybe that was highway whatever. Now, the good news was that I had compatriots, some, you know, people with me. They had topographical maps and they could point exactly where we were on the mountain. So that mountain, that, that map fit that particular, uh, you know, terrain, that particular character. When I laid Cincinnati, the map of Cincinnati out on the table, I did not get it confused with the real Cincinnati. Cincinnati was out there. On the table was a representation of it. And I want to go back to what Susanna was saying and, and that made an impact in her life when she realized that this other person had a slightly different map from hers and that map worked for them, maybe it would be useful if she began to discover their map. Um, you might find this to be surprising, but I at one time thought I knew I was right and you were wrong. <laughs> and that, and that the fact that you didn't understand that meant that you were an idiot. <laughs> But that wasn't the case. Your map has been shaped by your being grown, you, how you were raised, the culture you were in. I mean, I was raised in Southeast Kansas in a little farm community. Uh, you know, my understanding of reality and how the world worked was not the same as what it was in Kansas City or in Chicago. Those people were weird. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I mean, it was just a different understanding of the world. I, I took, uh, Cynthia and I t took a weekend uh, retreat with, with a guy named uh, Maladama Some and his wife Sabafu. Uh, they were from Africa uh, and they were people on a spiritual journey and we, and they came to, and, and, when Maladoma came to the U.S. to work on and to get his doctorate, he was raised, he was born in a, a, a little village of, among the Dakar people, was stolen by, Jesu, by priest uh, when he was four and took in, taken away from his village and raised until he was about 18 or 19 when he finally punched out a priest and ran away, <laughs> ran back to his village didn't know the language anymore, sat down under a tree, and when the village people came back from working in the, in the areas around the, his, his mom, his mama recognized him. And at any rate, the point was, here's the, here's the point I want to say. When he was in the United States and he, he was in his training, he was, he went to a, a psychological hospital, a hos hospital where people were being treated for psycho psychological issues. And there was this man there that heard voices that nobody else could hear. And he saw things and people that nobody else could see. And he'd been diagnosed as schizophrenic. In his culture, those are people who have access to the next world and they are revered rather than classified as being mentally ill. They were respected and treated differently. That's a different map. Richard Bandler, one of the creators of, of um, Neuro Linguistics Programming, was working in a hospital like that. They brought him this, this client, this young man who was terribly bothered by the fact that this, this girl from, uh, you know, home on the prairie, uh, kept jumping out of the TV screen and chasing him around and telling him all the stuff he was doing wrong. <laughs> Richard did this crazy thing. He says, 
You don't have a problem. You just don't have a good imagination. Have you ever heard of the Playboy channel? <laughs> now, now, I'm not necessarily one that wants to promote the Playboy channel, but I want to tell you the point is, the issue is not, is, is not that you have this situation necessarily, or you've had this past, this history. It is how do you keep that problematic past alive now? That's the problem. How do you take that problematic past, change it just enough to put it where it belongs, behind you? Here's this wonderful thing about the understanding that neural linguistics programming has. Had. Yes, you've had a terrible past. I don't even need to know or want to know what happened. All I want to know is, how do you keep it alive? And what can we do to set it aside? I don't want to know what happened. That's none of my business. I don't care when it happened, who was involved, etc. I don't need none of that. All I need to know is, how is it that you keep it alive and you relive it day after day after? Let us get put it in its proper place. Make the kind of changes internally. Not that you forget it. We don't really create amnesia. Sometimes that becomes important and it can be done. But we want you to learn everything that you can learn from that experience, but pain, take the pain away from it. So. Anyway, I hope that has some clue about what the map is. Uh, you know, I, I, when I was in junior college in Southeast Kansas, I had a friend from Des Moines, Iowa, and he had an entirely different, he lived in the city in the, in the sort of the ghetto place. Uh, I had a, just an entirely different map of reality. We were best friends. He was fun because he was weird. <laughs> he did strange stuff, and it was a, it was an exciting adventure running around with him all the time. I and mean, we did silly stuff, you know. <laughs> Except when we had when we were really involved in a relationship, it wouldn't be bad, wouldn't be unusual for us to be on double dates, and in the middle of the evening switch dates. I mean, you know. <laughs> That's stupid in my map of the world, but it was a lot of fun at that time. And 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 the girls didn't take us seriously; they didn't care. <laughs> so a different, it was a different time of world. Just so it was a different kind of world. Most that's for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dating was a lot more just about having a lot of fun and doing crazy stuff. Okay, well we're we're coming up to that hour, so we want to have respect for everyone's time. And Larry, why don't you just wrap up with some thanks, and we'll sign off. I just want to say, Larry, we'll be in the Facebook group this afternoon, uh, yep. uh, doing a live on is NLP trauma informed, and then uh, also I put a link in the comments for you if you want to sign up for a private 15 minute consult to to make a decision. Maybe you have a question about the program that Larry can answer. Well, I do want to, to just thank, first of all, the participants, and it's so good to, to some of you I haven't seen since the training, and that has just been fantastic. And uh, and to be honest with you, I'm working on some things sort of as a as a follow up, and I'm going to be in touch with you about maybe participating in that, whether whether it's the next level or a deepening of this level, I'm not exactly sure, but I will be contacting you. The people that came to listen to these folks, these people came from a lot of various different backgrounds. We have people, we got Mexico here from us and you know, Arizona, and they got people from the North and we have people from Canada in the group before. And, uh, and I mean, they, and they would have been here, but they couldn't be here. Some of them could, would have been here. Um, I just want to want to say I got into uh, NLP because I needed 
uh, I was in a situation where I was in a rural community. I was a pastor at a church and the, the first line of uh, mental health was the local pastor and I didn't have answers. I didn't know what to do with, with those people and I got into NLP and I helped them find their own answers in their own way that was appropriate for them and most often it wasn't an answer I could have even thought of or certainly might not have taken myself it happened for them but the the real miraculous thing was that it changed me as well and I remember the time that my my older daughter who was college age by this time saying on a telephone conversation with a friend dad's been acting really weird since he got back from California and it's a good weird and uh, it changed my life and my goal now is not just to help you change your life but help you change the lives of the people you care about and the people with whom you interact and whether that's privately personally or professionally doesn't matter the thing is that you can change people and the law and because of that the world you live in can be changed you know when you change your life you change the world you live in right you live in a different world so thank you for being with us I hope we can get together again sometime. And once again, I want to thank these four people who've been with me. It's just terrific to see you guys again. Bye-bye, everybody. We're going to sign out. Oops. <laughs>